God damn it. This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Unbound Volume 4. Yes, this is the fourth post-launch update that Need for Speed Unbound has had for this game. And I am pretty happy with that, apart from this car's handling. And of course, the main part of this update is in fact celebrating the momentous occasion that Porsche of great lengths has survived 75 years. That's a weird way of putting it, but they are celebrating their 75th anniversary, which is an amazing milestone that not many car manufacturers are really able to stay say in this day and age and what better way to celebrate than it was so weird you would never think that need for speed of all franchises would be the one that would wanting to be celebrating this occasion but considering that porsche actually is a very significant brand for need for speed it's got a very special relationship the only manufacturer to receive a single dedicated game from the franchise known as Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed, which again was a Need for Speed game, which was just talking about Porsches and its history and everything about them, which again is really cool. So volume four, what is all in volume four? Of course, because it is a Porsche themed update, you know, celebrating the 75 years of Porsche, we have two new cars, which would be the a legendary Porsche 911 Carrera S 1997. And if you are able to finish the special Porsche playlist three times, you are able to earn the fully electric Porsche Taycan Turbo. I am switching out to a much less powerful car because I still cannot get my handling right on that freaking Ferrari. More new content being new speed pass content. So you can now go up to 75 ranks and all the way on the, on the way up you're able to get more uh life cell really products and tire next big thing is run the gauntlet playlist is with a new playlist that is focused on more intense long race driving they have included cops with gauntlet uh playlists now so that's pretty interesting and this one was kind of as a tie up or tie in from the previous update there are now new link up areas which those was quite the surprise update for me I was just, i wasn't sure what a link up was i wasn't really sure why we had it and it was a really surprise update because it was something cool to do with the rest of the online community something to really be interacting in a more cooperative environment versus trying to just take everybody else out for your own gain so new link up areas more things with link ups i'm happy about that a new thing with the volume four is what is known as a boosted event. So during a very select time frame, certain events give out a certain larger percentage of payouts, which is quite interesting because you're able to then, instead of just spamming the uh, map or spamming everybody in online saying, hey, join this one random event that I've chosen, it's actually able to give more of a reason to choose certain events over others and in this way too there is an incentive to as well because people in general online are always looking to make more cash so finding ways to be able to highlight more unique playlists as it goes on is kind of neat and this one i kind of enjoy as well kind of an off the wall thing that oh wow that was something <laughs> this one's kind of a little bit off the wall but uh, appreciated nonetheless uh, for those of us who had the McLaren F1 LM, or, no, excuse me, just the McLaren F1 part of Need for Speed Heat, where you paid like three bucks or whatever for the black market DLC where you're able to get that car, uh, you can now actually receive that same car in Unbound in both in online and in story. I'm not sure about that, but I know for a fact that when I logged into the online, it was waiting for me in the most gaudy body kit and livery I've ever seen in my life so I'm probably going to have to update that eventually but if, nonetheless nice to have it 
And then we reached this part of the update. And so I wanted to not make this a rant video, but with the recent kind of drama going on with Linus Tech Tips and just the mood that I've been in general today, um, I'm in a mood to call out corporations for greedy, unethical, and just straight bad practices. So one of the new things with Need for Speed Unbound Volume 4 is new DLC packs. Okay, you know, the, apparently there were some other DLC packs that have been released in previous volumes that I just hadn't touched on because they really didn't push out a marketing push for it. It just, again, just like, oh, by the way, we did this. Cool. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So if we're looking at this stuff now. The things that were released part of Volume 4 are as follows. The Volume 4 Customs Pack, which is basically hero cars from previous games, which, if I recall correctly, were in Need for Speed Heat for free, mind you. Then we've got the Lotus Exige Legendary Custom Pack, which is you get a Lotus Exige with some parts and a 10-level speed boost pass. And then you've got a Hip Hop Origin Swag Pack, which according to the uh, EA's website, is featuring a custom Mercedes AMG G63 celebrating the Origins Hip Hop and new Hip Hop Origin Swag Pack. And a premium pack includes a wide range of uniquely designed items, including a clothing pack, Doberman mask, driving effect, and an exclusive horn, and more. <sighs> God damn it. Because if that wasn't enough to begin with, look at these prices for God's sakes. So the customs pack, six bucks. Eh, if it were like five, so six bucks versus five. All right, fine. I'll give them that. A custom pack with a 10 level speed boost for a single car is $10. What the hell? $15 for another single car. And then I didn't even touch on this in volume three. Yeah, volume three. Again, same thing. This looks like basically a copy of the Hip Hop Origin Swag Pack, where it's just like more swag stuff. The Volume 3 Custom Pack is, again, some custom parts for three specific cars as well. $15 again for that. $6 for that. Keys to the map, it was only like 2 bucks or 3 bucks for Heat. Now they've upped it to 5 which, again, it is a free website that you can go find because somebody did the work within a week of launch to say, hey, don't buy this, but here's all the collectibles on this like map, interactive map, mind you. Yes, it's not overlaid in-game like this thing is, but I mean, at the same time, too, like if you just use a website, you're going to save five bucks. And of course, that's not even including the fact that we've got the Palace Upgrade Pack, which was $10 for four cars and four unique liveries. So, I mean, these prices don't even make sense with one another. Furthermore, the last part of the update is discussing that if you have EA Play, you'll be able to receive a uniquely customized Lamborghini Countach LP800-4, the 2021 model. And I will admit, it is a cool-looking car, and it was a very nice car to be playing in the campaign during one of those delivery miss missions. So, yes. That's cool, I guess, if you give EA money, but I want to go take a step back to the DLC. I'm struggling to understand who their audience is as far as those individuals looking to purchase the DLC because they are extremely grotesquely grotesquely anyway. So no, like, the DLC is, is extremely, extremely overpriced for what you're getting. And it, unfortunately, really reminds us who we're dealing with. Because I don't know if I've ever seen... I mean, Blizzard's battle passes or just any, like, 
Battle Royale in 2023 has got this kind of garbage. But I mean, it's it's like barely any cosmetics, cars that you may or may not have to grind anyway. That was the thing that I noticed with a couple of the other DLC as part of the Palace Edition is I'm pretty sure you still had to grind out the cars, so you're not even getting them. You're getting the opportunity to acquire a special livery by doing the same legwork as the normies who just have the base game. So like I said, I'm struggling to understand who their target audience is. I imagine it's probably a bunch of teenagers, rich teenagers who have um, access to their parents' credit cards. And that is the white whales that they're looking for. Especially when you think about mobile gaming, I think there's like... I don't know what the stat is. It's like one to... 3% of the player base accounts for 95% of the revenue, so I wonder if that's... Ouch. Gonna be kind of the same thing here with the DLC. And, like, immediately, too, we've already seen that, you know, EA has probably lost quite a bit of money on this, because within a month, it was on, like, a half-off sale, and recently it was done doing, like, another $18 sale off of Steam. And this is a brand new $70 game less than seven months ago. So I think the price that was determined on some of these DLCs are in an attempt to make up some last revenue, which, looking from a business point of view, okay, fine. I guess that makes sense. But as a consumer in the year 2023, when inflation is still rampant, that we're having to go through so many cost-cutting measures to pay down our credit card debt and student loans are coming back and it's like who who wants to buy this dlc i just if you really want to piss off your entire fan base so you can make a couple of bucks i mean ea is great at that and we've seen that time and time again so i don't know why i'm still rambling about this or why i'm still surprised about this it's just I'm just a little bit sad by it. I guess I'm also a little bit sad about Volume 4 as well in general, because it seems kind of like Volume 3 where very few things were actually ever added to this game. And we'll make these comparisons to, like, Forza Horizon 5, who have had banner after banner after banner of updates, where they've added so many cars and so many new gameplay modes and everything and we're sitting here and we're getting little bits of cars here and there it's i hate to say this but it feels like gran turismo recently but gran turismo does this one better because it gives us new tracks and i don't know i'm just disappointed all is all really I am really just holding out for the Crew Motor Fest and holding out especially for Forza Motorsport, which I'm trying not to get extremely hyped about Forza Motorsport, but I just can't help it. Uh, I definitely will be making a lot of videos on that, I can assure you that much. But yeah, it's just, it seems like there is a lull in quality of content being released and being in the racing genre it's uh, a little bit unfortunate because it's like what are we supposed to do other than watch the Gran Turismo movie at the moment which that's all I got but at the end of the day Need for Speed Unbound is still being updated which I guess is better than nothing and with how they didn't say this was like the final send off or whatever I'm starting to debate if they're going to release a volume 5 even which would be incredibly interesting maybe even volume 6 i don't know what to expect from ea anymore i really don't so if there's a volume 5 and a volume 6 i really hope that they do something different than what they've been doing but i'm not holding my breath so again my apologies that this is kind of a ramble rant video it's just more of the status quo, I guess. But, you know, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got some more Unbound content eventually coming up, I imagine, with Volume 5. Uh, we've got some more Gran Turismo content coming on up. 
course, stay tuned for the Crew Motorfest. I am definitely going to be playing that within that first week. So stay tuned for my review of that. Of course, I've been Matt. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.